Hello, everybody. I'm Olivia Panay with Miles Split. And for this week's telestration, we have a, an amazing guest joining us all the way from Michigan. Help me to welcome Kayla Jackson of Detroit Renaissance High School. She is a rising senior, has done such remarkable things over the course of her junior season, which we will be talking about in a little bit. But she won the state title in the 100 meters, 200 meters, and helped lead Detroit Renaissance to a runner-up position for the team title. But at the AAU Junior Olympic Games, this woman just did a phenomenal job. You've also earned an award, which we'll talk about in a moment, but she broke the AU Junior Olympic Games record in the 100. She ran 1151. She broke the 200 meter record in a 2301 and then also helped Track Life University break the 4 by 100 meter record in that and she ran the second leg. Just a phenomenal job. She also ran a 2285 all conditions timed this season. But Kayla Jackson, without further ado, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So before we dive into everything, I asked Kayla if she has completely have recovered from the AU Junior Olympic Games. It was, you've been doing a lot of rounds. You were doing the 100, the 200, four by one. So how do you keep everything, I guess, together? I know you guys do a lot of training. So how does, how did your training help you with all of the rounds that you had to do at the AU Junior Olympic Games in Houston? Well, with our training, we basically mock the meet. So some days we would do what we would have to do in the meet. So run our events and we just kept practicing that over and over so we could have that strength and power to be able to do it. Now talk to me about that award that you were recognized for all of your accomplishments at the AU Junior Olympic Games. Talk to me about what happened when you got onto that field and which award that you earned. The award that I earned is actually right here. It's the <laughs> Joel Farrell Memorial Award. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't even know that I was getting it. So right after my 100, they walked me onto the field and presented me with the award. So it was just a very special moment knowing that I worked so hard and was able to show everyone and receive an award for it. You definitely worked extremely hard over the season. And let's talk about this 2285 because you turned a lot of heads when you ran that time, the fastest all condition time so far over last season, because, you know, we're moving into cross country. How did that, that meet at the AU West Coast Junior Olympic Games fuel you and kind of giving you confidence to move forward at this AU Junior Olympic Games, which you competed with your team? So being able to PR at that meet, it gave me a, a lot of confidence knowing that I'm still able to PR and this late in the season. So that was a great moment for me. Continuing over to the Junior Olympics, I did the same thing and PR each round again. Like imagine PR every single time you step on the track. And I'm sure that really boosted all of your confidence. But let's talk about this 1151 and this 2301. Did you ever think that you would run this that fast? at that point of, of your season? Yes, I saw it. I actually saw it coming sometime and I was just happy that it came at that moment. I trained really hard for it. So it was just a relief to be able to run that fast. All right, y'all. So I'm about to spill the beans. We have Kayla Jackson with us for this telestration. You guys actually have an opportunity to watch and break down the hundred meters and the 200 meters, which she ran 1151 and 2301. All right, Kayla, are you ready to get this party started? I'm super excited. Yes. <laughs> All right, perfect. We are going to pull up the 100 meters first. All right, Miss Kayla Jackson, here we are for the 100 meters. This was the semifinal round. And of course, you won three gold medals at the AAU Junior Olympic Games. But in the semifinals, you're lined up in lane number four. And you told me beforehand you wanted actually to talk about this particular position here. So why is not even starting this telestration so important? Like what was going through your mind as you're, you're getting in the blocks for this round? Well, for getting in the blocks, I know I had to focus and get it through my mind that I had to run well to be able to make it to the next round. So in this moment, I'm just thinking through my mind to focus and do everything that I have to do. Were you nervous at all? Not really. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't nervous. How incredible. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to we're actually going to move a few frames. You're at set now. Why is your set so important to focus on right now? So being in set, uh, our team, 
we've been practicing for a while things to do in set. So when I'm in set, I actually hold my breath until the gun goes off so I can have that power to be able to push out hard. Wow. How long have you been focusing and training on holding your breath during this, the set position? It's probably going on two to three years now. It, it wasn't easy. It was something you had to practice and get used to. So that's what I do. Awesome. And what do you think comes along with holding your breath? Why do you feel like it helps you in particular when it comes to your starts here? It helps me because right when I take that first step, I just push out super hard and having that breath to like also push out gives me a boost as well. Incredible. All right, Kayla, let's go ahead because I know we have a few freeze frames ahead of us. So let's see what happens at point seven. That's actually where you want us to freeze it. So at point seven, you've taken your first step. Why is this part of the race so important to highlight? So this is important because your first step is the start of the race. So I make sure I have the furthest step and the fastest first step at the same time so I can be able to have that advantage in the beginning. Wow. So you want the fastest and the furthest step. Have you ever measured how far your furthest step has been at practice? No, when we measure, I usually just do it with cones and we try to go further and further each time. Awesome. And so how well do you think your first step in this race was for you just going off of the ones that, that you've done in the past? I think it was one of my strongest and farthest first steps. Though the beginning of the race is something that I really do focus on as well as the end, but that is one of the most important parts. Awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to move down the track just a little bit. And you done have done such a phenomenal job of coming out of your dry phase. And you actually want me to freeze it at 4.0. We have this amazing headshot of you. You're coming out of your dry phase. And I know it's kind of hard to tell where you are in position, but um, you're in the lead at this point. What was going through your mind? Did you feel the pressure at all in this hundred meters? And what were you kind of feeling right here? At that point, I wanted to make sure I stayed low and in my dry phase, just in case there was any type of wind that would blow me back or slow me down. So I tried to hold it as long as I could. Now, we did forget to mention this. There was a headwind. I believe it was the semi. Was it the semis or your finals that you had like that major that major headwind? It was the finals. The finals. OK, so the wind wasn't really consistent in Houston, it, it, there were some points where some heats had the wind to their back. Some had it in their face in this particular race. Did you feel any kind of wind around you and how did it affect you? Well, when I run, I usually don't feel the wind unless it's like super heavy, but I didn't really feel any wind in this race. It probably was maybe a little, but yeah, not too noticeable for you. I gotcha. All right, let's go ahead, Kayla, and move on a little bit further down the track because literally in 1.2 seconds, we're about to freeze it again. So 5.2, talk to me about this part of your race and why it's so key to highlight this. So at that point, I'm coming out of my dry phase, as you can see. And right when I lift my head up, I want to make sure I snap my arm down as fast as I can to get that acceleration going. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that a lot about you, you have the most perfect form when it comes to your arms. Like you have your arms, like you mentioned up by your chin, and we can see it here with your left arm and you have, you're looking at your right arm and has this really nice angle. And I feel like you've been practicing that and it's been showing. Why is it so important for you to focus on like your upper body, the way that you do, how has it helped you in the hundred and the 200? Before, when I used to did not have the best form, I noticed that not having good technique and form slowed me down and it didn't get me as fast as I wanted to be. So I made sure I practiced that all the time and practice and warm ups and everything to have the best form so that I can be able to go out and do things like this incredible. And we'll be talking about your arms a little bit later in the 200 meters. Cause I have some, some things up my sleeves that I want to chat with you about, but how are you feeling about 
your foot position here. I know we, we just talked about the upper body. How about your lower body? How are you feeling with your stride pattern and your posture as you're coming out of this dry phase? Yeah, I think it was all good. I um, made sure I had a nice knee drive, not too low, not too high, and a fast reaction with getting my feet back to the ground. So I think I did well on that part. I have to agree with you there. All right, Miss Kayla, we have one more freeze frame to go through here in this 100 meters, and then we'll move on to the 200. But you just look from phenomenal here, and we're watching your arms pump as you go through this race, and you wanted us to freeze it at 10.4. Why is 10.4? We're almost to this finish line, but why do you want to highlight this part of your race? That part is a part that I've been working on with my 100 was my finish. So during that race, I wanted to make sure I kept my form together and didn't panic or get unfocused when it came to running. So that part was important because I finished the race in the end. Awesome. And speaking of finish, let's go ahead and go through this finish line. You just kept on pushing. And what was your, what was going through your mind when you saw the 1151? Like, were you excited? Were you, I, and I know you mentioned that in the beginning that you're like, I knew it was coming, but like, did you think it was going to be 1151 here at the AU Junior Olympic Games? Yeah, I definitely didn't know when I was going to do it, which round it would be. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting for me when I crossed the line and saw the time. Incredible. And the fact that, you know, when it comes to like summer track, um, it's not like high school where it's freshman through senior years, like you're competing with the juniors and you're competing with the seniors. So you're kind of used to it just running from high school. And it's just hard for me to like, not hard, but it's like crazy to wrap my head around that you broke this record as a junior, you're moving into your senior season now. And with you competing at the AU Junior Olympic Games and represent Track Life University next year, like we can see even a faster time. So I don't want to jump the gun too much. And I know you literally just wrapped up your summer season and you're taking the time to recover, but let's talk about the goals that you have for this hundred meters next year. Like what are some of the things you're wanting to focus on and what are some of those times that maybe you're looking to hit next year? Yeah, for the hundred, sometimes that I'm looking to hit is um, maybe a low 11 mid 11 well I already did a mid 11 but <laughs> uh, maybe like 11 4 11 3 or lower so yeah and what do you feel like you have to do to get there I have to continue to train hard every day no days off and just push through as hard as I can no days off but you're taking this time to recover right now huh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So how much time did I know, uh, how much time did you have, I guess, between now and I know you're probably going to start indoor running um, the indoor season because you've done that before. So how much time do you have before you start thinking about indoor season and then moving into the outdoor season this upcoming year? Um, probably about just one week. <laughs> one week. We got one week recovery. No <laughs> days off for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kayla, let's pull up your 200 meters now where you ran a 2301 and you are again in lane four. This time you're in a black uniform. I've noticed it's been kind of hard to keep up with you because it's not like you have the same uniform each time. And, you know, it's been over several days that we've been watching you compete. Is there a certain uniform or a certain color that you like wearing, especially during the summer season? Um, I don't have a favorite. I just like all of them. They're just colorful and stand out. Incredible. All right, Kayla, let's go ahead and let's start this race. And I wanted to start it a little bit earlier and watch you get in the starting blocks because I feel like every sprinter has a unique way of getting in the blocks. How would you describe yourself getting in the blocks and just going through, going through this motion before you get in? Well, um, before this, I used to do like a jump and, a, um, uh, high knees, but since the JOs, I kind of switched it up. I felt like maybe I could save more energy by just doing a little high knees than getting down fast. Incredible. Sorry, I wanted to just watch this 200 meters because it was just amazing to watch you just execute just 2301, the fastest time in the US this year. And you backed it up because you ran a 20, 2285 with the wind. And here you are saying, no, I am the woman to beat. So I know we just talked about you getting the starting blocks and 
all the things and you're holding your breath. Do you hold your breath too for the 200 or is it just for that hundred that you do that for? I hold my breath for the 200 as well. Gotcha. Okay. Now this, I remember I told you I was going to spice it up a little bit for your 200 meters. I actually have two freeze frames that you don't know that I'm going to freeze it at because I was just super impressed with how, well, first of all, the first freeze frame I want to talk about is this one right here, how you came out of those blocks so aggressively. And sometimes athletes in the 200 meters, they pop straight up because you know, they have the turn, but you here are in the inside of your lane and you're still in your dry phase, which means that you're just executing so much power. And I know you just talked about how you want to have the furthest step and the fastest step. And sometimes you can't tell in the 200 meters because of the stagger. But looking back at this now, how do you think you personally did coming out of these blocks here? Coming out the blocks, I feel like I did well. My main goal was to stay low and uh, as a rabbit, have lane eight to chase down. Instead of just pointing out one lane, I want to chase everyone down. So that's, <laughs> that's great. All right. So let's move on a little bit. And you also wanted to freeze it here. We're not even halfway through this turn, but I can still see you're still in your dry phase. When it comes to this 200, how long do you typically try to drive out for? Uh, just probably just a little bit before the end of the curve comes up. Mm -hmm. that's incredible all right Kayla here we are a few meters into your race and we can kind of see it's very evident that you're putting separation on the girls to your inside and you're moving up to the ladies to your outside what are you thinking about and what was some of the things that you wanted to make sure you executed either at this point of your race um, as you, you're going into this turn so the main thing that I focused on was uh, running the inside of the lane and running the curve as hard as I can, because the beginning is one of the most important parts of this race as well. Mm -hmm. And in the 200 meters, I know in the hundred, you were mentioning how you really wanted to focus on your block start. That is something that you've been really wanted to just dial into when it comes to the 200, is it the same? Is it the, the start that you're still focusing on in this 200 or what other aspects have you been wanting to focus on over this last season for this 200 meters? Yeah, the start is one of my main focuses and as well as the finish, the last few parts before the line comes up. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. We're just going to move it a couple freeze frames down from here because you actually want us to freeze it at 7.9. Talk to me about 7.9. Why is this so key here? So at this point, I'm coming to the end of the curve and uh, my main focus for this part is just to keep my form and lock when I'm coming on the curve. Don't break down with anything. I love how you mentioned that because remember in the hundred, I said your form does not break and your form isn't breaking here. And for some athletes, when they come off that turn, they start to break because obviously, you know, it's 200 meters. It's like in the middle between an all out sprint and having some strength, but even looking at your, your posture here, we can see your knee lift and I can see that you're on your toes, how much practice or how much conscious effort do you make to make sure that you're still keeping your form even when you come off this turn we practice this a lot especially when we're tired and practice or feeling like we can't do it anymore that's when we focus on that the most with our form all right then and we're actually going to move it a second from this spot here literally a second we're going to 8.9 as well i know i snuck in that 7.9 <laughs> Um, freeze frame for you, but I want to point out this 8.9 here, how we can see this triangle kind of forming. You're at the top of this triangle, but you've officially made up the stagger. So what do you tell yourself when you're in this position to not break form and to also not get comfortable because you're already in the front and we're just about, we're not even halfway through this race. We're at nine seconds into this race. So what do you tell yourself when you take the lead and to make sure that you're still adding that pressure on throughout the race? Yeah, I tell myself to just keep pushing because I know there are girls behind me that want to take my spot. So I just remember that through my head throughout the whole race. All right, then. Kayla, let's move on just a couple seconds from here. 
we're going to freeze at 11.8 now. Why is 11.8 important to you? So that part is important because that's when I come off the curve. When I do that, I make sure I slingshot off of the curve. So I get more power and that pushes me through uh, coming off the um, curve. That's incredible. And how would you describe to someone who's not a sprinter, what the term slingshot means? I know you and I both know what it means, but let's just say a distance runner or someone that's not familiar with track is watching and learning about how to be the fastest woman in the country. What does the word slingshot mean to you? To me, slingshot means uh, having all your power off the curve and just releasing it all out as hard as you can coming off the curve. Great. I love that explanation. All right, Miss Kayla, let's go on. We're going to actually freeze it literally in a few steps here. We're going to freeze it at 15.3. Why is this so important here? This is important because we're halfway to the finish and some athletes begin to break down at this point from being tired and fatigued. So I just tell myself to keep my form together because I'm halfway to the finish. You are more than halfway to this finish. And I know I keep talking about your form and I can tell that you and your coach and your family have really put in the effort to make sure that your form looks incredible because I talked about this hundred here we are again, your, your left hand is up by your chin. Your right arm has this amazing angle. You have the knee lift, your toe looks incredible. Like you can tell that you've been focusing on your form. How do you think all of that practice has created a type of separation amongst you and the rest of your competitors? It's, um, uh, wait, <laughs> sorry. Um, practicing my form, it's gave me a like, uh, let me think how to say this. Take your time. <laughs> I know it's a tough question. Cause it's like, you, you mentioned before athletes break down and it's very evident here, 15 seconds into this race, more than halfway through that you are not breaking down in this 200. So why do you feel like your form and how does your form help you to not break down essentially compared to the rest of your competitors? My form, it gets me through the entire race. So being able to keep that together, it just shows a lot of strength and practice that I've put into it. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, let's move on. We have one last freeze frame to go through. And again, these arms are just pumping and you look incredible coming home and everyone else is no longer in the frame anymore. So talk to me about 21.7. Like what is happening for you? We're almost to this finish line. What's going on here? At this point, I'm coming to the end of the race and I keep everything together. And this is important because it's just one more second before I break the record. <laughs> yep. A second right before you break the record. Let's go through this finish line. And what happens when you turn around or when you looked at the, the, the clock that was by the finish line and you saw two, three, zero, one, what were your thoughts when you saw that? I was just so shocked. All the girls came and congratulated me and hugged me right after. So it was just a great moment. I, I was just lost for words. <laughs> And talk to me about Leah Burr, because she's another athlete that runs for Track Life University. And doesn't she go to your high school as well? Yes. So how does it feel to be able to train with her and compete with her at the high school level, at the, you know, going to states? And how does it feel to just continue training with her, training with her and just representing Track Life University together? Yes, Leah is also a powerful and strong girl on our team. Training with her is a blessing because she's a 400 runner. So having her strength to push me gives me the power as well. So she's done great this season, just like me. And yes. Awesome. Kayla, I am just so proud of you, of all of the accomplishments that you've achieved this year, being a state champion, fastest 
fastest woman in the 200 meters, 2301 le win legal, 1151 win legal, and you're entering your senior season now. And I know I asked you in the hundred meters, what were some of the goals? And I know you're still on this recovery <laughs> because you're just coming off the AU junior Olympic games, but what is something that you want to focus on in this 200 meters this time next year? Uh, next year, I kind of have the same goals to PR and basically to just repeat everything I did, but with faster times and just to finish strong. Now is a 22 on the vision board. I just need to know. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Are we striving for like 22.9, 22.8? What, what is Kayla? What is Kayla feeling about that? Um, uh, possibly a 22.5. Okay. I'm all, I am all for the 22 five. I will love to see it, but Kayla, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you so much for breaking down your hundred meters and your 200 meters from the AAU junior Olympic games. And we're looking forward to seeing what you do for the indoor season. Thank you.